What's up? And welcome back to another live unboxing with the Asus Strix G18. This is the RTX 4080 edition. We're gonna go through all the specs of the laptop. We're gonna unbox it. We're gonna take the bottom off. We're gonna do some initial basic tests with like Cinebench and Time Spy. And I might even load up a game to be able to do some gameplay in this live unboxing at the end as well. So there'll be timestamps along the bottom of the video if you wanna skip around to further points in the video. But other than that, I'm gonna be trying to answer as many questions as possible. Let's try to keep the questions primarily directed at the Strix G18. We're gonna talk about like what makes this different from the SCAR 18, what, uh, what the price is, where you can buy it, where I bought mine. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because this is, arguably the best bang for the buck RTX 4000 series laptop that we have so far. There's going to be even cheaper, better bang for the buck laptops later, like the 4070, 4060, or maybe 4050 series. But out of the 4080 and 4090 laptops, this is probably the best deal out there right now. Though there is also the Aorus 17H that has an RTX 4080, I think for like $2,200, maybe $2,300. So there's there's a little bit of competition for this guy now. I love to see the competition. Uh, right before we actually start unboxing this bad boy, I want to also mention, if you haven't seen, there is a laptop spreadsheet that I have spent many hours working on and I've even hired a couple of guys to help me out. So shout out to Kaylin and Ellie who are helping me uh, manage the list and keep these statuses up to date every single day. Uh, this list allows you to see my current ratings based on what we know about the laptops. As we get more information here, especially starting like right now, I'm gonna be like adding tons more data to the list. Uh, this is gonna be benchmark data like TimeSpy, Cinebench, and yes, even game benchmarks will be on this list. There is a mini review, which is like a summary of me talking about the laptop, the pros and cons of the laptop. Uh, the most important thing about this list that you need to know about is the expand button. You can click this and you can get pictures of the laptop uh, along with a summary here and then my ratings of that laptop. Um, and depending on which laptop it is, there's even hands-on videos that you can check out right here on the page that go back to my YouTube page. And I might be adding in other YouTubers reviews when they give me permission here um, and data from other reviewers if they give me permission to use the data. Um, but there are links to where you can buy this. So the place that I bought the best, uh, this Strix G18 is right here at Best Buy. Um, and it came same day shipping. They shipped it like last night at midnight and it came this morning, like an hour or two ago. Like I've been prepping to the live stream ever since this thing came in. I've been prepping before that too. But uh, let's talk about the specs on this Strix G18. This has got an i9-13980HX. Uh, that is the top of the line processor, the best that money can buy this year. I, I can't wait to test it out because this is gonna be one of the most powerful laptops for CPU performance that money can buy, especially at the price point that it's at. It's like maybe the best bang for the buck CPU price per dollar, but it's probably pretty dang close to that. And then the, for the GPU, we've got an RTX 4080 with up to 175 watts, 16 gigs of DDR5, I believe it's 4,800 megahertz RAM, a one terabyte SSD and a QHD 240 hertz, 500 nits display. Um, some of the initial tests have revealed that it's about a 450 nits display according to the testing meter. So that's one of the questions I have today. What kind of nits brightness are we gonna get on this display? Um, I do have a matter, uh, a, a screen checker behind me, so we'll be able to check the nits brightness as well as the color gamut on the display. Now on this sheet, I wanna also point out that I have added a new column called total volume. This is something that lets users like yourself uh, sort the entire laptop list uh, based on the volume, the size. Total volume represents the square inch volume or the cubic volume of the laptop itself. And so like you can see the smallest laptop this year is the Flow Z13, which is like the tablet. And the biggest laptop this year is the Alienware M18. Pretty interesting stuff. The GT77 is right there at number three. The, the Aura 17H, this is the other cheaper laptop that I was talking about, coming in at $22.99 for an RTX 4080, but it's only 150 watts. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and get to the unboxing part of this thing, all right? Uh, will this come with a 4060 or a Ryzen? I'm not sure uh, all of the 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 GPU configs that it's gonna come up with, I know that it goes up to a 4080. It probably will go all the way down to the 4050 is my guess. 
So uh, if you guys are enjoying the live stream so far, smack that like button and let YouTube know that this live stream is worth watching. Do, do, do. Okay, so we have a box within a box. Do, do, do. Ooh. Oh, okay, so there's the laptop right there. So it's a box that nestles the, the laptop. Got a nice plastic cover. Uh, I believe it's a metal top lid. Uh, which way am I supposed to open this? I guess this red thing comes down, so this goes down, and then you can pick up the laptop. Underneath here, we have our power brick and power cable, and that's a pretty reasonable sized power brick. It's not too big. It is a 330 watt power brick. So that is really a high powered power brick, which is you're gonna, you're gonna need that for this powerful of a laptop. So we have our uh, gaming notebook. This just has some really basic stuff in it. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to really see that very well, but I mean, it's basically a guide to the ports on the laptop. Warranty card. It says, warranties only applied if the product was newly manufactured on the date of the purchase or sold as, uh, not sold as used, refurbished, or manufacturing. So this is not a transferable warranty. It's only to the original buyer of the laptop. It's according to this, at least. So if you send this laptop in for repair, you'll lose any data that's on it, which makes sense. It's pretty normal. Warranty service will be provided if you have three bright pixels or five dark pixels or eight bright pixels in total or two adjacent bright pixels or two adjacent dark pixels. So you need to have multiple bad pixels in order to get your display replaced. Um, and this is one of the reasons why it's kind of nice buying from Best Buy because I can just take it back to Best Buy if I have any of those display issues with this laptop right here. So usually for pixels, you'll notice some almost immediately, but sometimes, you know, bad pixels will just show up later on too. So that can be a bummer, you know? All right, so this is just another quick guide saying how to plug in, can it focus, there we go. Explaining how to plug in the laptop. And so let's go ahead and take the plastic off this bad boy now. Full arm span width length, so that's about six feet long approximately. This cable is not as long, about four feet long for the power adapter to laptop connection. Still pretty long though, that's gonna give you a good amount of reach. I kinda wish this was another foot longer, but that's not a big deal. All right, so let's take the plastic off of this guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I always, I always love taking plastic off of brand new electronics. It is like very satisfying to me. <laughs> I wanna see how Asus has changed up their, their internal screw design. So we might even start with that. Okay, taking the plastic off again. Exciting. So this is the iFixit toolkit. It has all kinds of tools, um, screwdriver sizes and spuger tools for taking this off. Uh, there should be a link in the description to this kit if you need a kit. This one's more expensive. There's definitely gonna be some cheaper kits out there, but this one's a really high quality kit that has lots of um, options to help you get any laptop open. So. Uh, what's the price of this laptop? This laptop costs $24.99. And if you're wondering about the price of all the different laptops this year, there is a link in the description to my 2023 gaming laptop list that has every single price of all of the new laptops that are currently up for sale. And there's also links on where you can buy them from all of the online stores that I can basically easily, God laptops are so expensive now. So. I keep hearing that and I think the mid-range has gotten a little more expensive. You know, a couple of years ago, the RTX 3070 version of the Strix G17 was only uh, 1799 and this one's now 2499. But the main the main thing I would disagree on the pricing discussion here is that the highest end laptops like the MSI GT77 was priced at 4599 for the highest version of, well, the, for the RTX 4090 with only 64 gigs. Um, but the primary thing is that six years ago, I bought, an M I bought an MSI GT72 for $4,600 six years ago. So with inflation, the laptops have actually gotten cheaper 
over six years, not more expensive. So I don't know this, at least the ultra high end ones, they've always been like $5,000. I don't know why people are just now noticing. I mean, I've been the high end laptop buyer for many years and I've spent, I've spent more than $4,000 on probably 10 different laptops over the last 12 years. I don't know. I just don't know why people haven't noticed until now. Like I think it's just cause of the economy and people being more money conscious right now. I believe this screw in the bottom right is a pop-up screw. Let me show you. So this pop-up screw causes a separation to occur between the, bo the, the, the bottom panel and the upper panel, which makes it much easier to remove the bottom of the laptop. So I really like that Asus did, uh, does this on their laptops. They've been doing it on the Strix line now for several years. So using a, a spuger tool now to gently pry the laptop up. Do you lose the warranty if you open the laptop up? No, you do not lose the warranty if you open the laptop up. You don't lose the warranty even if you change components on the laptop itself. You only lose the warranty if you damage the laptop. And you can definitely do that. You can definitely damage the laptop. Don't think that you can't damage the laptop and you know, and then send it in and get warranty fixed. If, they, if the manufacturer believes you damaged the laptop because of some mistake you did, don't expect to get them to fix it for you. At the same time, you should be able to get in here and modify you know, the RAM, swap the SSDs around, and not have to pay anything for it. So I'm having a little hard time getting these transition from the ribbon cable or from the rainbow lights over to the main chassis to pop up. So I need a better angle to pry this. This pla uh, plastic like guitar pick works really well sometimes areas. And then when you need a little more power, switching back to this, this one helps a lot. So I kind of switch back and forth between these two tools pretty often when taking bottoms of these laptops off. So I could probably just pull this sucker off at this point, but it, I, I tend to always try to go all the way around the laptop, popping it up. Cause you don't want to break any of these plastic latches off entirely if you're too rough with it or do the wrong angle. The Strix G18. Wow, there's so much space around the battery. <laughs> I'm really surprised actually how much space there is. Like, it's an enormous gap around the battery. Uh, we've got these heat pipes that go over the VRMs. We've got three to the CPU over here. We've got GPU. We've got uh, this extra fan that literally is designed to blow air out right here. It sucks air in from the keyboard and blows it right across the GPU and right out the back. It doesn't even have any heat pipes attached to this fan. It's just like a general body air movement fan. And it, I'm sure it's gonna help cool these heat pipes down. I've just never seen a brand implement a third fan like this in any laptop design. Uh, that I'm aware of. Where are all of the components? It looks like we have both of the DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM right here. And then we've got our 90 watt hour battery right here. We've got our first M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slot here. So there is the other M.2 slot right here with the screw that goes in so you would lay it right across right there. Our Wi-Fi is right here. Now this has liquid metal conductonaut on the GPU, I can't remember if it's on the CPU as well. I think it is on both in this unit. I have to double check to make sure. Um, this is probably the display cable attachment right here. Um, and then on the fan exhaust, we've got fan exhaust across the entire rear of the laptop, but you can see the actual fan areas that it goes out mainly is right here, right here, right here, and right here. So there are uh, four main areas that it goes out, but it also dissipates with this general fan out the middle of the back too, which is, it's just such an interesting thermal design from Asus. I don't know, it, we'll have to see how it actually performs in temperatures. I think this is gonna be a great performer. Kind of, I try to do it all around, but you wanna make sure that you get the pop-up the pop -up screw here fully screwed down. That's one of the first screws you put in. I, I, I've had issues where the chassis don't wanna pop back together fully. Feels solid. Like it feels like it's built like a tank to me. Like this, this metal is high quality plastic. Sorry, the metal is high quality. The plastic feels very rigid, strong. 
Let's see. Right, I'm gonna try powering it on. I probably need to plug the power adapter in first. Some of these laptops won't turn on until you plug the power adapter in. We should have power now, showing power. Ooh, that's a cool animation. It's the same Strix animation that plays across. Now we've got our rainbow. The backlight is bright enough that I can clearly see it um, even in this fairly well lit room. I don't know, we're not getting anything on the display yet. There it is. Okay, starting to worry me a little bit. I was like, uh oh, I hope we don't have another dead laptop. <laughs> Order status, whether the laptops are in stock or not. And then multiple links on some of these laptops on different stores where you can buy them. And we're updating this every day, including whether or not they're in stock. features. Press Windows plus U, or select the accessibility icon in the bottom Mute. corner. Mute. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh Cortana, <laughs> please be quiet. There are one, two, three, three levels of keyboard backlight brightness. Uh, and there is a, I didn't mention it, there's a link to that laptop list in the video description down below. And some of those links there are affiliated links. And if you do use them, they do help support me as a creator. No pressure to use them, no pressure to buy as always, but I try to provide as many options for you guys to support me without having to actually put money out of your wallet or donate. So this is a way for you to support me and my team as a, you know, as a creator uh, without having to actually dig money right out, directly out of your wallet. You don't even really realize or recognize that you're supporting me and you still help support me. So I really appreciate every one of you guys that use those links and support me. It really does mean a lot. So thank you very much. Uh, we're ready to name this beast. What should we name it? Chat, I wanna hear some good names. We're gonna, gonna name it from chat. I got a little sunburn going on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like you can tell, right? Like on my face. <laughs> Cause the screen's so bright. Thunder thighs, I like that one. Strix mixed strict face. <laughs> okay, that one's the winner. All right, that's all the winner. Strix mix Strix face. Oh, that's too long, we gotta pick a different one. Oh my God, all right. Uh, we're just gonna go with thunder thighs because uh, for ports, I haven't gone over the ports yet. Uh, let's do that while we're restarting. On the right side, we so we have two USB A's. These are the faster, 3.2 uh, Gen 2, I believe that they're called. Uh, so they're gonna be able to support a good amount of uh, bandwidth. On the right side over here, we have the power adapter, two and a half gigabit ethernet, HDMI 2.1, a Thunderbolt 4, and then a USB-C with power delivery. And then we have our headset port. As you guys know, if you watched any of my other videos, it's all just thermal exhaust. So that's an interesting aspect of this laptop is there's no ports on the back and that's a big part of how they upgraded the thermal performance of this machine this year. Cause I basically say no to all of these privacy things like checking, taking all of my data and using it for advertising. Don't really appreciate Microsoft doing that anyway. Worst part about Windows is the setup part and the updates. Yeah, yeah, especially when you've got your laptop full of stuff like I do, like I'll have like Photoshop open, I'll have a video edit running, I'll have a script all written up in Word, and then Windows Update will reset my machine overnight. When I didn't give it permission, it was just like asleep, it like woke itself up, did the update, and then suddenly I've lost like my script, I have to recover files, like it happens all the time. Check the speakers. Let's check the speakers out, that's an easy one. YouTube, there we go. Wow, this, this display is awesome, right? I mean, you guys can see how awesome this display is. Like, it is such a high quality display. Before we move on to the sound, I also want to not forget to do a, like a flex test detail all around the laptop. I love the RGB. I love that the RGB wraps around the sides. That is awesome. The, the keyboard, I do feel like the keyboard RGB backlight could be brighter but especially in a dark environment, the keyboard's gonna look really, really great. It's just brighter environments, it's not gonna be quite as good. All right, so flex tests around the keyboard, let's go. So right here, no flex, whoa, okay. We let a little creak sound, but I think the plastic was just settling together. Basically no flex, very, okay, so there's a little more flex right here in the middle way, but like no flexes near the corners, a little more flex, not too much, but again, at the top now, really solid, really, really rigid. A bit more flex, 
over here at the top middle area. Again, you're not gonna really touch those areas, but I just like having a really rigid chassis because it like makes it feel really well built. And this overall is, is very non-flexy. It's like, I give it, only dock it a little bit for having a little bit of flex. Let's check about the keyboard area because that's also very important because that's where you're actually gonna press down. So like a really heavy key press type of pressure. Like barely any flex with a light key press, but there is some. And if I do a heavy key press, there's definitely a little bit of flex. So that's probably one of the main downsides of this chassis against something maybe like the Razor Blade series or whatever. You know, like the, the Razor Blade series is gonna have the least amount of flex being a unibody aluminum chassis. So if you get it too low, the screen hinges won't hold up. It's an 18 inch display. I wouldn't expect it to hold up too well. The hinges are all right. I think. I mean, I think the hinge design themselves here are good. I like this hinge design. The The bigger thing is you want it to be really stiff, you know? And we're gonna put this right where the user would be when they're listening to music. Okay, so the speakers I would say are great mids, decent highs, there's some breakup in the highs, and the lows are not as punchy as I would like, but there is some bass. That's my initial analysis of it. It's it's pretty good though. I think it's above average for a gaming laptop. The Strix speakers have always been above average, uh, but these ones, these ones, will, these ones will get the job done, especially for the price point. I think there are better speakers out there, but you probably have to pay a good chunk more money for them. A 7.5 to eight range based on first impressions, but I'll wanna do more testing. All right, let's check out the webcam. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's the webcam. It's not the brightest environment in here. Okay, so this is me testing the webcam out. How does it look? How does it sound? How's the onboard audio sound? Um, I'm going to check this out in a little more detail, but in general, I would say the image quality is okay if it's a small image, like you're like using a, a little window, but you try to blow this thing up. Like right here, it looks good. Looks good, nice detail. But you can tell this is not a super highly detailed camera. Um, if you're trying to do full screen video recording like I do in my review videos, you're gonna want a better camera for sure. It's not an amazing webcam. It'll work in a pinch. That's, and we are in turbo mode. Just verifying. I know I set this in turbo mode, but I just wanna make sure we are in turbo mode. Where are we at? We're at 155 watts on the package power. We got 31,000 for our first score. Thir oh, 30,892. Almost 31,000 for our first score. Let's run it again. We're pulling 177 watts there, 165 watts. So we got 30,800 that time. Let's just stay focused on the Cinemage R23 window. It usually scores, it can score just a hair better sometimes when you, you focus on it. Is this upgradable to a two plus two terabyte? Uh, no, it would have two M.2 slots, so you should be able to add a second one uh, if you want four total, yep. Did it already hit TJ Maxx? Yeah, it hit the thermal limit, but the fans weren't spinning up because we were in automatic fan mode. So we got 31,342 on that run. Pretty insane. Yeah, I'm gonna switch it to manual ma uh, manual mode with max fans here soon. So that'll give us the more accurate temperature rating for like a long-term uh, thermal load. Like if you were to render a video for 20 minutes or some kind of animation or something, it'll be a lot more accurate that way. Um, but we're doing turbo mode for now to see what kind of performance we can get out of it. 31,294. So we got 31.3 twice in a row. And let's go ahead and switch it. Manual fan mode, we're just gonna set this up to maximum fans. It's showing that it's a 175 for PL2, 140 for the PL1, which is our long power limit. And our base clock offset, this applies a slight offset, a slight overclock. We also have a thermal target. We can say, hey, keep it at XYZ temperature for us. Um, and don't let it go too hot. I like that. That's new. I didn't, that's new in the software since I last used this. We're just gonna set everything up to maximum. Boom. Listening to the fans right now. Surprisingly quiet. I'm a little surprised at how quiet max fans are. So right now we're pulling 170 watts of power. You can see the package power right there in the highlighted column. 167. 
So it's going all the way up to 170 pretty consistently. We got 31,000 on that run. Our temperatures, let me go ahead and reset it so we get our maximum temperatures. All right, so we're on a 10 minute test now. That way it won't stop. We're gonna be able to see our continuous temperatures and mimic very closely to what like a video rendering load is gonna be like. Our core clocks, our eight performance cores are doing 4.1 gigahertz. 4.3, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.1, 4.2. You can see the averages right here in the far right column. Uh, and those ones are hitting about 4.18, 4.19, 4.2 on this core. And then our efficiency, uh, our efficiency cores are reaching 3.3, 3.4 gigahertz. Approximately for most of them, I'm seeing 3.3, 3.3, 3.3, 3.4, 3.3, 3.4, 3.3, 3.3 performance power here. So let's take a look at our temperatures. So right now we're not thermal throttling on any of the cores. I mean, that's really, really impressive that it's capable of, of keeping this thing so cool. Um, and it should be throttling down to 140 watts. Yeah, so now you can see that our wattage here is at 133, 143. Our average is 146 since we started the test two minutes ago. These are excellent temperatures and very sustainable over the long haul. Like you could render this thing nonstop 24 seven and be pretty confident that you're not gonna be thermal throttling on your CPU. You're gonna be power limit throttling at 140 watts of power. And it's gonna be adequate, adequately cooled, at least if you're in manual max fans mode. Uh, so the Alienware M18 does have a four fan design. I don't know if it's actually a better thermal cooling solution or not yet, we need to actually test it and find out. It clearly could raise the power limit above 140 with these maximum fans and our temperatures could still probably be under 90. This is not undervolted yet and you can undervolt this processor to boost temperature or to lower, lower temperatures and increase performance. Uh, you can undervolt in the BIOS. Would you guys like to see that? Would you guys like me to try to undervolt it in the BIOS? I'm, I'm curious or not. Um, they don't let you do a big undervolt. I think it's only 30 millivolts, which is pretty tiny. I used to do on average like 80 to 100 millivolts a few years ago, but then they started locking down the undervolting. And I mean, there's no guarantee that a 30 millivolt undervolt will take on the CPU, but it probably will take and it probably won't cause any problems at all. So looking at our clock speeds now that it's been running for a while, um, the performance cores have dropped to four gigahertz approximately. E cores have dropped to 3.3 gigahertz across all of the E cores pretty much. Our performance core temperature is about 85, but our E core temperatures are like 77, 79. So it's kind of balancing out the, the P cores. Uh, what would you choose between the SCAR 18 and the GT 77, considering the $1,300 Euro price difference in the UK? So, the GT77 and SCAR18. The GT77 is gonna be noticeably higher performance machine. We've had our time spy come out now for the GT77 being over 23,000 on the highest test that we've seen so far. And the SCAR18 was right around 21,000. So, I mean, that's a significant difference, like 8% or so difference between the two. I don't know if the tests were done identically though, because we don't know if like the SCAR-18 was tested in max performance mode and stuff like that. So maybe there's ways to boost the performance of the SCAR-18 in these testing, but initial testing shows the SCAR-18 is a little bit behind the GT77. That said, I do prefer the 240 Hertz QHD display over this, the GT77's 4K 144 Hertz display uh, for eSports myself. The display quality is definitely better in general usage for the GT77 though, because um, it's higher resolution and it's a much brighter mini LED display. So do you recommend using the manual mode instead of turbo for video rendering? I'm a graphic designer. The main thing about manual mode is you can set it so that it's max fans all the time like I did, or you can have it, it, it tailored. You can tailor the curve of the fan to go up and down with the temperature of the laptop. So that way the fans are really, really quiet at idle, get up a little bit louder at medium, and then just go full blast when anytime the temperature starts rising. That's probably how I would set up the fan curve. B 
because the performance in manual mode should be the highest theoretical, except in some gaming scenarios where turbo is actually going to be a little better. We'll have to see. We need to do testing, but um, you can use turbo if you don't want to mess with fan curves. So I'm, re I'm trying to check. So Highland ER says, says, don't undervolt on BIOS. If you get a Windows update and starts flashing the BIOS, it will kill it. Why, is, why would it kill it? I killed three M16s like that. Okay, well, we're going to do this. CL says 301 is the latest BIOS version at the moment. Uh, Mario97, I don't believe you can change it from Intel XTU. Asus has locked it down, so you, can't, you have to do it through the BIOS. That's my understanding. If we break it, it'll be great for the live stream. I don't think we're going to break it. I think we'll be okay. So you want to hit core voltage enabled offset 30 set to minus. I believe that should all be correct now. If it's not, this live stream will be a quick one. There we go. I hit save and instantly turned off. I was not expecting it to instantly turn off. <laughs> My heart stopped there for a second. It was like, oh boy. Did I just kill it? <laughs> Usually it's more of a warning. It's like save and then you're like, yes, save. And, now, and then you also have to click exit and save and restart or something usually. <laughs> We're back in Windows. Look at that. All right. Uh, please try to go further using throttle stop. Throttle stop, I don't think will be functional with the new generation of CPUs. They almost always takes an update to be able to access those new CPUs. So I would anticipate that not working. You say, uh, Shadow says, try minus 150. That would be a, a very severe undervolt, uh, but Asus does not let you go with that big of an undervolt. That's just not even an option. The maximum in the BIOS is minus 30 millivolts. I have had a couple laptops in the past that could go to 150, but that is that is rare high quality silicon to go that 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 low of an undervolt. Our package power pulling up to 170, 31,868. That's a new record for the laptop after the undervolt. So, 32,258. Whoo! I'll have a full 10 minute test with undervolting to compare for the main review. Let's, let's do a 10 minute test, CPU, clock speed, and temperatures we get over at least a couple minutes of being ran, you know? I'm surprised it, we've been running now for a minute and a half and we're still pulling more than 140 watts. I don't think it should be doing that. It's supposed to clock down below 140 as soon as like 30 to 50 seconds after we start rendering. Does this have liquid metal in a vapor chamber? This has liquid metal. Um, liquid metal conductinot extreme, which is even better than your typical liquid metal. It's like pure gallium. Our CPU package power is now at 140. It's now come down to the correct wattage. I was starting to worry that it's not gonna come down, but it took a couple minutes for it to come down. That's impressive actually. Like the fact that it could stay above 140 for so long, we are, our averages are higher than they were before, but not by too much. I don't know, you have to give it the full 10 minutes, but it's like 0.15 gigahertz higher with the undervolt, maybe 0.1 gigahertz higher. Cause we were like just barely above four or like 4.1 on the P cores. And now we're at 4.2. <laughs> I just got a notification. Thunder Thighs is available for streaming on my main computer. I was like, what's that? It's a Steam notification. This does not support CPU overclocking. It is locked down in the BIOS. I did confirm that with Asus. Uh, maybe if there's a way to break in, you might be able to do something. Currently out of the box, there should be no Intel XTU support for extending the power limits, stuff like that, which is kind of a shame because you could like, you know, slap a laptop cooler underneath it, and then set fans to maximum, go into a chilled air conditioned room, and just set, you know, set benchmarking records, you know, that'd be pretty sweet, but see you later, Chad's awesome stream, glad you are back. Thanks, Highland, for stopping by, and thanks so much for the super chat, dude, that really, I appreciate it. 
It takes a lot of work setting up and running these streams, editing them, putting out all this content. So your donation is certainly very much appreciated. NVIDIA GPU only mode, apply. Is this stronger than the Razer Blade 18? Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, we don't have enough detailed benchmarks to be able to conclusively say it's stronger. They're, very, they're gonna be in the very similar ballpark. This one might be a little better, the Blade 18 might be a little better, but they're gonna be, probably, they're gonna be within 10% of each other for sure. Let me know in the, uh, in the chat, what do you think this laptop is gonna get in Time Spy? First ever Strix G18 RTX 4080 Time Spy. It's, it's going above 175 for short periods of time, but it's, it's averaging well above 170. Rock solid. And notice the GPU temperature is also only 74 degrees when pulling these levels of wattages. Insane. That is so good. Great job, Asus. Arua, I, uh, I am guessing the fans are 54 decibels and it's max fan mode, but I need to actually have a, a decibel meter. Dun dun dun! Graphic score, 19,031. So 19,031 for the graphic score. CPU score was 15,880. That's very impressive. Let's try running it in turbo mode and seeing if we get any different performance. I don't think we will. Shia asks, is that bad? No, that is exceptionally good. So in the past, an RTX 3080 Ti would get about 13,400 or so, give or take a few hundred points uh, as the best possible score. And the fact that this is a $2,500 laptop and we're pushing way beyond it, that, that just is an incredible uh, performance uplift for, for the money. Um, compared to the last generation 3080 Ti's. That said, those those laptops are getting to get cheaper and cheaper because these are out now. So we'll have to actually keep analyzing the price to performance ratios between RTX 3000 and 4000 to see which ones are actually gonna be the best bang for the buck for the end users. Flatstick Productions. Thanks so much for the $10 donation, man. It does help uh, It does help me pay the bills. Thank you so much. Okay, so notice the fans are super quiet now. We're in turbo mode, are almost inaudible, but I think I'm hearing some coil whine, I think. That's interesting that the laptop's now so quiet that you can hear the coil whine. Like, I'm not hearing the fans at all. And we're only 78 degrees on the temperature on, this, on the GPU. What? <laughs> How? I mean, I'm guessing it's gonna keep going up on the fan fan noise, because we're now hitting 80 degrees on the on the GPU, so. The fans are gonna keep getting louder and louder. New GPU drivers released today. Did you install them? Yeah, we updated to the latest drivers. In turbo mode, it is super impressive the level of performance we're getting with very moderate fan noise. Like you don't need to be ramping up these fans to insane levels to have decent temperatures. We're Right now we're below 80 degrees on the temperature. We're not saturated yet, but I would say the fan noise is only probably like 50 decibels if I were to guess right now. We are still undervolted, but this is a GPU focused test. There's only one segment of the CPU. Uh, and Bahadir asks, I've had, or says, I've had the Asus Strix G17 with Ryzen 9 5900HX and 3060 for close to one and a half years now. And the fans have not had a single problem and the performance is just as good as the first day. That's exactly been my experience as well. Uh, sorry, so manual fan mode got 18,480 with 1931 on the graphics score. Turbo mode got lower score by 220 points approximately with 140 less on the graphics score and 500 less on the CPU score. Can the GPU hit 20K after an overclock? Maybe if you know how to actually overclock and undervolt at the same time, using something like MSI Afterburner. It's a lot trickier than just undervolting a CPU, but you might be able to push another thousand points out of it with overclocking and undervolting at the same time on this machine, um, or by overriding the BIOS to shoot more juice into the GPU, though that's obviously probably gonna void your warranty if you run into any issues. All right, so let's get Hogwarts Legacy continuing to download, and we're gonna run that game and check out how the performance is. Try a GPU overclock, please. Uh, we're not gonna do that 
in this video. If I do any GPU overclocking, I will want to have tested it probably beforehand. A lot more complicated and complex doing a GPU overclock. Um, I've done it before. I've boosted performance a decent amount. I have overwritten a VBIOS on my SCAR 15 a couple years ago. I did a live stream on it. Uh, it's certainly risky. It's way riskier than doing an undervolt. And it's not something I would recommend to most people. This is the first time I think I've ever tried doing a brightness test on one of these live streams, but I might start incorporating it into my live unboxing if you guys like seeing this kind of information. Uh, w asks, how is the keyboard, I find the keyboard on my M16 to be meh? I, it's the same keyboard as far as I can tell from the Strix G17 from a couple years ago. And I really like that keyboard and I still like this keyboard. Got a great feel, decent travel. Um, it's not clicky, it's quiet, but it still has a nice tactile response when you press the keys. So we're just gonna do the color gamut and the brightness and contrast tests. All right, so the Spider 5 has to remain completely flushed to the screen in the appropriate spot. And screen display brightness is at the maximum that it can be at. That is extremely red. <laughs> there we go. W with the $10 super chat. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> so right now we're testing the brightness at zero percentage. It's going to basically give us the nits brightness range of the display, how dark it can get, and then how bright it can get. Mr. Giz, you have a guest. Yeah, I know. Jared, Jared stops by my live streams pretty often, and I appreciate him. So I appreciate all his reviews and everything he, he puts out. He does a good job. If you guys are enjoying the live stream, be sure to give... Uh, the channel is subscribe, and if you want to see, especially if you want to see all the live benchmarks for the Strix G18 coming up here soon, um, I believe I'll probably live stream the benchmarks tomorrow. So be sure to stop by again and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the notification. So I've, one thing I've noticed with my Spider 5 is that it never quite reaches the rated specifications of the displays, so keep that in mind. My rating so far is 99% sRGB, 89% Adobe RGB, 88% of P3 color gamut, and then for brightness and contrast, 24 nits brightness, very, very dim on the lowest setting, 76 on 25%, 50% is 152 nits brightness, 75% gets to 316, and at 100% brightness, it is pushing the full 494 and for contrast ratio it's 850 to 1. Overall really impressed with the results that's that's some impressive uh that's an impressive display and basically in my opinion matches the specifications because like I said the Spider 5 Elite I don't think it measures the color gamut quite perfect and it probably is actually basically 100% p3 color gamut um, but not according to the sensor that I have. But maybe I, there are more expensive color checking tools, uh, or maybe this display could be calibrated better. I don't know exactly uh, why we're not getting the 100%, but it's it still is probably accurate to say it's 100% P3 color gamut. So it's time for Hogwarts. You know what? You know what that means? Hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> Wingardium Benchmarker. Okay, I've been thinking, I've been wanting to uh, show these off on a live stream at some point. <laughs> okay, and my toothbrush wand. How long have you been waiting to bust that out? About four years since I bought it at least, what, four or five years? I don't know, it's been a long time. Talk about realistic graphics. Hey, we're getting into the game, all right? And we're not just gonna play it, we're freaking getting into it. I made a video showing the performance of the RTX 3080. Uh, in Hogwarts Legacy. I released it as a short today. In general gameplay at uh, ultra settings, ray tracing disabled, but DLSS on quality, and it's 1600p, so 16 by 10 QHD, which is the same thing we're gonna run here. We're gonna mimic, mimic the same exact settings. Basically, we are getting, depending on the area, 60 to 80 FPS. The test, so let me show you the, the run through again. There, there is some noticeable stuttering in this game still. Um, Primarily when you're loading into new areas because it has to load in all these NPCs and the lighting and the environments and everything. The 1% lows are going to be a bit wonky when you're doing a test moving from area to area. And this is basically the exact same place I ran with my 
Legion 7i, which averaged 68 FPS on this run. And now we're doing 150 FPS from that spot to here. That was the run that I did on my 3080. It's a two and a half times increase. How is that possible? Does Hogwarts support frame generation? It is. So there is frame generation. That's, that's why the performance is so good. Let's turn frame generation off. I was like, that is an insane number. <laughs> that was like absolutely crazy. Why is the hair color blue? Because it's my character. <laughs> of course, my favorite hair color is, uh, my favorite color is blue. Let's check the performance out now. This might be a CPU bound area. There is a lot of NPCs here, so I wouldn't be surprised. So again, my RTX 3080 and the Legion 7i got 68 FPS in the same run. We got 95, all right? So 95, that is excellent. So let's go ahead and go do like a one quest. <laughs> if you change the hair color to pink, it'll increase the FPS by 10. Sure. <laughs> Can you guys hear this? Of Charmwick, but I am confident that we will take hold with the passion and rigor requisite of such a challenge. <laughs> so I played the game for about three hours last night and I really enjoyed my time in Hogwarts Legacy. It felt, it felt like a very authentic Harry Potter universe, but it was just completely different teachers and environments, like a whole new set of people. And they all are really well done, as far as I can tell so far. And the combat system was fun as well. So averaging 116 FPS through this uh, cinematic storytelling, We're learning a new spell, Accio now. Sharma asks, is ray tracing on? No, ray tracing was disabled because it causes the games to crash. I'm expecting a driver update or a game update to fix that probably soon. Are all settings on max? Yes, all settings are on max. DLSS is on quality and there's no frame generation. You can see if I add frame generation back, which if I were to play this game, I would definitely be playing it with frame generation on. As soon as we add frame generation, look at the FPS boost. It like jumps up noticeably. Will I be reviewing any of the XMG laptops? Yes, I will. I have an XMG Neo 17 right outside there, uh, but I won't be able to do a detailed review on it until they send me a new production unit. XMG is going to discover an issue they want to fix before we do any detailed review testing. And they've also halted, uh, delayed sending out the actual production units for now until they fix them on all of the units. They want to make sure they ship a proper product without any major problems with it. And I give them kudos for delaying the product uh, and not shipping a bad product. That's honestly my thoughts. So does this laptop have a fingerprint reader or face recognition? Thought it had Windows Hello, but let's check. That's a good question. Yeah, it does not have Windows Hello. I, I take I take a few, I take 10 points off, I believe, for not having Windows Hello in the premium score section. I am super impressed with this machine overall. I think this, this laptop is the top value right now still for all laptops with the RTX 4000 series. I think, as far as I can tell, it that's it. This is number one. Um, not that there aren't other laptops that are fantastic deals. Like I think the Scar 16, which I also have coming in, the Legion Pro 7i is great value. The Alienware M16, also fantastic value. But uh, this one I think has the best blend of all of the different features uh, put together. Those are my thoughts. Okay, anyone that's Skipped around in the live stream is like, why is he wearing Harry Potter robes now? That's it guys. I will have another live stream unboxing of the XMG Neo 17, where I'll do a lot of the same stuff as I did in this stream, but I won't be able to do any of the testing. I'll just be doing an overview and detailed hands-on with it. Uh, oh, and I've also got an Alienware M16 that should be coming my way. And then, so I've got current laptops being shipped to me, SCAR 16, Lenovo Legion Pro 7i with a 4090, MSI GE78HX, and my goal is to do at least one live stream every day for the next week or two, probably. So be checking back in the early afternoon. Uh, that's when I'm gonna try to do my live streams, probably like say noon or one o'clock every day. And I'll be doing live benchmarking on some of those streams, and then I'll be doing live unboxing for the other parts of those streams. We'll have to see. Uh, is HP even doing anything? They launched an Omen 17. It's on my gaming laptop list sheet and you can order it right now. I should probably order one actually, 
now that I think about it. That's it, guys. I'm going to end the stream. There's, the questions keep coming. I thank you so much for all the questions, and thank you so much for uh, interacting and, and hanging out today. It's been really great. You guys have been great. And thanks, Jared, for stopping by. See you in the next one. Brandon out. Brandon out.